This video will start off in similar fashion to the others, talking about the land and the current apparently one-sided conflict going on around the land and tourism, but which incorporates other components as well. So let's get into it. And this comes from Reuters. Mexico City government joins Airbnb to lure digital nomads despite rising rent fears. Next, Airbnb the newsroom. UNESCO Airbnb in Mexico City partner to promote the city as a remote working hub. Of course, there will be a pattern that unfolds here. So bear with me. The partnerships. Airbnb's partnership with UNESCO builds upon its Mexico by Land sustainable tourism initiative and will promote Mexico cultural Mexico's cultural and natural heritage through a dedicated online site. Airbnb will showcase unique cultural and creative destinations and experiences. As a part of its partnership with Airbnb, the Mexico City government invited its network of tourism entrepreneurs to participate in a series of UNESCO-led training sessions. The program will help entrepreneurs develop authentic cultural experiences that represent Mexico City's unique cultural and creative traditions across many diverse neighborhoods. And of course, this is a partnership of druidic entities designed to create the illusion of separation. When in fact, all of these entities are joined together. Through Airbnb's partnerships with Mexico City and UNESCO, the platform wants to help redistribute tourism in the city by empowering and promoting cultural and creative experiences that will drive economic opportunities for more Mexicans. Notice, of course, that word there, redistribute. In this case, it's not the redistribution of wealth, it's the redistribution of land, their land as they see it, and they'll do it in your face everywhere. Evidence of this can be found with the Peace Pole. According to Wikipedia, a Peace Pole is a monument that displays the message, may peace prevail on Earth in the language of the country where it has been placed. In usually 3 to 13 additional translations, the message often is referred to as a peace prayer. The idea of Peace Poles was first sought by Masahisa Goy in 1955 in Japan. And of course, this is a UNESCO thing, or rather UN. And it's showing an obvious connection with the so-called universal church. Here's one of those so-called peace poles that can be found in uh, the Rising Park area in Lancaster, Ohio. And notice the symbol underneath it, a circular six-pointed star inside of a ring. Almost looks kind of like a wheel. In the United States, the UNESCO headquarters which has a very interestingly looking audience hall, is located at Millennium UN Plaza to United Nations Plaza, New York, New York. It's, of course, New York City. Now, the, in the United States of America, UNESCO World Heritage Convention has allegedly 25 properties inscribed on the World Heritage List. The USA is home to 24 of the 1,121 UNESCO World Heritage Sites across the globe. These sites are designated for their universal value in natural or cultural heritage and are places as unique and diverse as East Africa, Serengeti, the Pyramids of Egypt, Great Barrier Reef in Australia, and Grand Canyon in the United States. World Heritage Sites represent an incredible opportunity for the United States to tell the world the whole story of America and the remarkable diversity of our people and beauty of our land. Notice that our does not, of course, refer to the nation, but rather the universal control structure mechanism in which foreign entities own the majority of, well, as I see it, they own all the land across the globe, but here they stipulate and show in your face control over some of the more important tourism-based landmarks. Former Secretary of the Interior Sally Jewell commented after nominating San Antonio Missions National Historic Park as a World Heritage Site in 2014. San Antonio missions represent a vital part of our nation's Latino heritage and the contribution of Latinos to the building of our country. About UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, is the UN specialized agency for education, science, culture, and communication. With six cultural conventions, UNESCO promotes the integrity of culture as a factor of peace, inclusive economic development, social cohesion, and sustainable management of biodiversity, in addition to the exercise of cultural rights and 
equality of gender, among other goals, based on goals 8 and 12 of the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. UNESCO promotes the development and implementation of policies aimed at promoting sustainable tourism that creates jobs and promotes local cultural uh, culture and products. Of course, this is all coded language for basically, we own the land, we control it, and you can't do anything about it. About Airbnb, Airbnb was born in 2007 when two hosts welcomed three guests to their San Francisco home and has since grown over to over 5 million hosts who have welcomed over 1.5 billion guest arrivals in almost every country across the globe. Every day, hosts offer unique stays and experiences that make it possible for guests to connect with communities in a more authentic way. In the United States, city to seek Airbnb tax, Redwood City negotiated with short-term rental company to collect fee to fund affordable housing. So yes, this all has to do with corrupt control of the land on behalf of foreign interests. Redwood City officials will start negotiating with short-term rental giant Airbnb to collect hotel taxes from its users and remit them back to the city to fund the creation of affordable housing. Of course, that idea of negotiation is not so accurate as to more like decrees given to a sect that controls pretty much everything, at least as, as they see it. Next, a Bigfoot festival is coming to Hocking Hills this summer. This is dated March 9th, 2022, and this surrounds the clearly overt generation that the propaganda machine does to basically generate interest around their business on behalf of their corporate foreign investor conglomerate. Hockey Hills Bigfoot Festival, August 2nd, 2024 to August 3rd, 2024. Downtown family-friendly festivals, free fun, indoor music, community art and culture, outdoor tours, workshops, nightlife featured events. Downtown Logan, August 4th through 5th. The third Hocken Hills Bigfoot Festival, all in the historic downtown Logan, the hometown of the Hocken Hills. Hocken Hills is listed as one of the best places to travel in 2023. The Forbes travel researchers say Hocken Hills is home to an outdoor wonderland and is Ohio's prettiest spot. So let's go and see exactly what the reaction is. And this article does not give very much information on that. Airbnb letters lead to lengthy discussion during council meeting. Uh, yeah, that's certainly a way to dumb down it, dumb down the um, actual tension, I suppose. September 15, 2022, Logan, one of the biggest issues within the city, City Logan, that should probably be City of Logan, at the current time is with the Airbnb community. It was very evident by the attendance Tuesday night at the Logan City Council meeting that people in the community are clearly upset with council members. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to put it mildly. The mayor and city service director, the room was packed to capacity. And of course, this is a theme that you'll find pretty much across most places around the globe right now. As with Merida, Merida, the Yucatan capital, stands out as one of the safest cities in Mexico and Latin America, earning recognition from CO World Magazine as the second safest city on the continent after Quebec and Canada. And I can attest as having lived there that that is not true. This is all just a propaganda machine, which will make bold-faced lies it doesn't matter as long as it serves an agenda that agenda that has to do with control of the land and generation of uh basically corrupt state-funded tourism as far as the states that pretend to be governments but really are just for-profit corporations naturally throughout the hawken hills you'll find a variety of lodges such as here with the Woodland Retreat Lodging and Meadowlark Lodge. There's also the Ridgewater Lodge and Luxury Lodge Home Lodging. This is, of course, only to list a few of the numerous ones that all seem to have some sort of connection to the alleged state government. There's the Lake Logan Luxury Cabins and the Hawking Hills Unique Lodging Chapel Valley Lodge. Also the Laurel Run Farm and Rocky Hill Lodge the Rush Resort Luxury Lodge, and Hometown Lodging. And one of these interesting pieces of Airbnb property, which clearly has a link to the little corrupt groups that run the area on behalf of the UN and other foreign interests, is the Georgian Manor, spelled with two N's, a Georgian Manor bed and breakfast, our Ohio bed and breakfast, rated number one with TripAdvisor 13 years running, premier lodging on Lake Logan and the Hawking Hills State Park experience southern hospitality, luxury, 
and Hocking Hills Lodging at its finest, overlooking the serenity of Logan, located in Hocking Hills State Park. And of course, notice that it states 13 years. Now, when we go and look at the property, we notice that it is tucked away on a rather um, <clears throat> interesting side of Lake Logan, in which it's located off of a peninsula and off of a pretty close to, anyway, the main road. If we look closer at this area, we notice that there's a main U.S. Route 33, and then running parallel to it is this Route 3. And in order to get to this area, you have to take Route 560, which ends in a no outlet. Now, if we look at Google Maps, we will notice something very interesting about this area. There is a sign by the turnoff to this road that leads to that bed and breakfast, which reads Lake Logan Beach Buckeye Trail and Boat Rental. That Buckeye Trail is important to note because it the arrow points directly to the area where the Airbnb, uh, bed and breakfast, likely with some scheme with Airbnb like all these others, where essentially what you would call public land or public state land, as they would say, because it's quote unquote theirs based off of foreign investment. Well, they took that and they used it. They would probably say sold it, but they used it to establish their uh, new tourism program that they're trying to push out uh, in everyone's face, where they control everything and they use the control of the land. So, but they, the important part here is that they took a quote unquote public trail and used that property for their scheme. Now, in order to connect this, we'll go ahead and look at the Hawking County Sheriff's motto, serving with honor, protected with pride. However, notice the black and gold on their um, seal. This correlates to the Knights of Columbus, a clearly Vatican outfit with a similar mission as the uh, Jesuits, the so-called Army of God, where it states our mission together, we're empowering Catholic men to live their faith at home in their parish, at work, in their communities. Notice, of course, the black and gold coloring there. Also, under their missions tab area, we find insurance. The Knights of Columbus is a fraternal benefit society, which means we can provide financial security to members and their families while turning premiums into charitable impact. I wonder how they acquire those funds. Well, we can look below where it says asset advisors seeking to both grow your wealth and maintain your integrity considered our fully compliant investment portfolio. Asset advisors, I would say more like asset administrators. Still even creepier, their supreme officers. The first is Patrick E. Kelly, a supreme knight. And then there's ABP William E. Laurie, a supreme chaplain. Well, isn't that nice? We also have Arthur L. Peters, Deputy Supreme Knight, Patrick T. Mason, Supreme Secretary, Ronald F. Schwartz, and by the way, Schwartz means black, that's important, Supreme Treasurer, and John A. Morella, Supreme Advocate. Finally, with this list of creepy rulers, we have Carl A. Anderson, past Supreme Knight. Now, this Knights of Columbus order has strong connections to quote-unquote law enforcement all around the nation, and that is a very important pattern of, of activity. Around San Ramon, Knights of Columbus honor firefighters and police. And there's a, another induction from those uh, really annoying propagandists that are trained at the university with their stupid uh, comments instead of an ampersand. Austin County Sheriff, Sheriff Jack Brandis, is proud to announce that the Wallace Knights of Columbus have selected Lieutenant Matt Walls as Peace Officer of the Year. Congratulations on a job well done. Wasn't that nice? The Repository Canton, the Knights of Columbus Canton Council 341, resume its annual Blue Mass to honor first responders from the Stark County Sheriff's Office and the Kent Police and Fire Departments. Blue Coat Awards were given for 2020 and 2021. This year's event marks several changes normally held on St. Patrick's Day, the program has not taken place since March 2019 due to the pandemic. Uh-huh. And didn't the shutdowns in Ohio start in 2020? 
actually specifically March 14th, 2020. But anyway, uh, this is uh, in reference to first responders. And of course, that moniker there is another uh, label as part of the propaganda system because they these people are all of their agents, their thugs that go around enforcing their foreign laws. And Knights of Columbus Citizen of the Year, Sarah Vaughn, Charles County Sheriff Rex W. Coffey is pleased to announce Sarah Vaughn, coordinator of the CCSO's Teen Court Program, I'm sure that has to do with child trafficking, was recently named Citizen of the Year by the Knights of Columbus at a ceremony held on March 23rd. Tulare County Deputy named Officer of the Year at Public Safety Night. Fresno, California was a special night for Tulare County Sheriff's Deputy Louis Arajo at the Knights of Columbus 37th Annual Public Safety Night on Saturday. Arajo is named Officer of the Year by the Knights. Knights of Columbus Award Area Law Enforcement Officers of the Year. The Knights of Columbus honored three area law enforcement officers during the annual award ceremony. Law Enforcement Officers of the Year were Sam Shexnadry. Ascension Parish Sheriff's Office, Lee Stromberg, Gonzalez Police Department, and Jeffrey Bennett, Louisiana State Police. Richland County Sheriff's Department, December 7, 2022. Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott held a press conference on December 7th, joining the Knights of Columbus Council of Our Lady of the Hills Catholic Church to present a donation. To serve and protect, Filipino Police Council attracts hundreds of members with evangelizing charity. Knights of Columbus. Oconee County Sheriff's Office, South Carolina, is feeling thankful with Knights of Columbus at Oconee County Sheriff's Office, South Carolina. The Knights of Columbus have generously, generously donated children's winter coats for those in need. This was the biggest donation yet with a whopping 72 children's coats. And, of course, this is another example of their public relations tactics, their overt shows of charity when, in fact, it's all about uh, theft and controlling the land and robbing everyone while placating the so-called masses. Now, in Lancaster, Ohio, there's the Knights of Columbus Council 1016, and their Facebook page has just about nothing on it, which is very interesting. Now, Fairfield County, not Hawking County, interestingly, is not located in the so-called Columbus region, where a county doesn't matter, basically, and nothing else matters. Because everything is included, this whole region is included in the so-called Columbus region, and it's important to note that the uh, organization that seems to be heavily embedded with uh, so-called law enforcement is called the Knights of Columbus. Now in Lancaster, there's this interesting location called the Lancaster Vineyard Church at 446 Wiley Road, and if you look on Google, the entire area around it appears to be farmland. However, when uh, uh, with a cursory um, on the bo boots on the ground uh, survey of the area, we find it is definitely not farmland. Where you will notice that the entire area is under heavy construction, with no apparent signage or reason why it is simply being done, and without uh, obviously the consent of the people in the area, nobody knows what's going on. And this is just one of the many interesting elements that we'll find throughout the so-called Columbus region. Also, in the city of Lancaster, there is a construction on what's allegedly an enormous waste treatment plant in literally the middle of the city off of the main highway. Now, in the great city of Columbus, where, of course, the Knights of Columbus get their name, or at least the city gets its name. On uh, East Broad Street, you find some interesting objects. These things appear to be some sort of surveillance equipment, but they're nondescript and they're unmarked, but they do stand out. Also, over by the Department of Administrative Service, Services and Department of Health Vital Statistics, over for the state of Ohio, you'll find another one of these interesting devices, <clears throat> which, again, is unmarked, nondescript, looks like some sort of surveillance device. And this probably has some connection to the vacated sheriff's office buildings that you'll find around the region, some sort of movement consolidation, or perhaps it's simply uh, removing themselves from quote-unquote public access because what they're up to is fairly obvious, really very criminal in many aspects. Now, if you do anything about this, then they threaten no farmers, no food, 
which basically means that they will impose an embargo upon any area that seeks to lay down the law against these types of crimes. And naturally, most people who are involved in these schemes certainly deserve uh, punishment, possibly even death, considering they are, are all occupying the land on behalf of foreign interests. They are, in fact, foreign adversaries. They are not the law enforcement, and they are trying to do whatever they can to keep the true law enforcement from rising up against them, which is, of course, the militia or the we the people who keep it bare arms. Thank you. If you have enjoyed this video, please join my newly formed Discord. There are free books available at the links. And if you so desire, you may support my work and any of the options available. Buy me a coffee, PayPal, Cash App, etc. Thank you.